Here it says, the Federal Presidency of Switzerland in the colours of the Knights Templars. One for all, all for one. This is what the Knights Templars said. Unus pro omnibus, omnis pro uno, which says on the ceiling of the Swiss Parliament. One of a kind, Switzerland doesn't have just one head of state, but seven. And you can see there are seven. One, two, three, four, five. They're the concept of four and the concept of three. There you go. It's always the same. The government known as the Federal Council is made up of seven members elected by Parliament. They have seven heads of state. So Switzerland is the end times beast with seven heads of state and ten ministries with all nations traded through its Swiss Nazi Templar banks. And out of this evil place there actually is a man today who has actually given a number for his child's name. And this descendant from the base of all evil has announced an idea so incredibly evil that it can only have come out of the beast with the seven heads of states in the Alps, which in fact it does so. This man out of the Swiss Haldiman nobility with the Isis horns in his coat of arms has officially announced that before the end of 2022 he will connect a human brain to a computer in order to give us a chip in the forehead and one in the hand. They say he's the richest man on the planet, worth $200 billion. He has many wives with whom he had 10 children with. The 11 died. One got born out of a surrogate mother, artificially inseminated. And number 12 got the number 12 in his name in Roman ciphers. I guess with so many kids, you just stop giving them names and just give them a number. So here's the name. Remember this well, because you can already, this is officially, eh? And you can see here, already here, there are two different writings. Here's with an A, Haldeman, and here's with an I. And sometimes it's only with one N, sometimes it has a D behind, but it's all the same. And the origins are Swiss German from the Emmental. You can see the Isis horns, which Isis, the goddess, the pharaonic goddess, head on her head with the sun in the middle. Exactly the same, because these people are all pharaohs. And look at the magic wand here. You know, like, like connects a person, his brain to a computer, you know, with a, with a magic wand. And here you see the concept of three, three red lines. And the concept of four for the white lines in the Templars colors, red and white. You know, these people, they do miracles with a magic wand. You know, it's the right hand, the right hand of Freemasonry. You know, the hidden hand is the right hand because with the right hand you kill someone or you write something down in order or something. So this is their official coat of arms. And also here's the concept of three, you know, they've got four, uh, four. they've got four colors here. And uh, so remember this name very, very well. In Swiss German, you pronounce this Haudemann. Hauen, it means to hit or to strike, Haudemann. You know, Nazi Templars, the Swiss mercenaries. But let's say 
Haldiman. Remember that very, very well because it's coming back in this video. This is number 12's name, which looks kind of out of a science fiction sci fi movie with aliens and artificial insemination by the guys in the spaceship. The official name is X A E A hyphen 12. A child for a purpose instead of a child you love, indicated so by the choice of name that looks more like the code for a product or some military upgrade. At the end of the name you see the X11 for 12 in Roman ciphers and the AE combination of the second icon exists in German and in Swiss German for the A umlaut pronounced E. The name of this extremely dangerous Swissy is of course Elon Musk. And don't have yourselves fooled by his three accumulated nationalities, South African, American and Canadian, of which he's none of them. He's in fact of the very powerful Swiss nobility bloodline of Aldiman from the Swiss Emmental region, in which I actually lived like 10 kilometers away, about which I even heard the Swiss say that it is the most dreadful Swiss region. And oh boy, did they make me feel this. The Emmental region where the Haldiman nobility of Elon Musk's bloodline are from was also the worst region for the Swiss slave children, also called contract children nowadays. And the Swiss slave children era lasted until 1989. You see, Nubians, Indians, jaywalkers, and the rest, that Pharaoh's nobility also kept white slaves until 1989, long time after the abolishment of slavery in the US. Uh, many years ago, I made this video here on my channel, Gatsefrats, about, um, here's the title, Switzerland own African slave trade, slavery ships of Swiss Navy. How the Swiss are into the international slave trade in, Amer in the Americas on my channel Gatsefrats here. So there are a lot of names now known. So to get rid of the bar here, I'll, I'll just turn it on here. So you can see a lot of names here, like here Schlumpf. They even have a uh, one of the seven heads of states. I think actually now, Wittmer Schlumpf, uh, a woman. Well, th her family was also in the in the slave trade, and the Swissies they even had vessels, slave vessels, by the name of Helvet Hel 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 Helvetics, like C H Confederatia Helvetics, uh, all, all with Swiss names. B de Vaud. City of Lausanne, the, the, the names of, the, of the, uh, the, the slave trader vessels. There are many names here, you know, like here, down here. Uh, you have the names here, Tsolikova, Kunkler, Riedi, Gonsenbach, De Puri, Favre, Rossel, Labhardt, Selweger. Ah, René Selweger, yeah, she's Swiss. You know, the famous American actor, well, her family was in the, uh, 
in the American slave trade. That's why they uh, they, they stayed in America. Eh? And her head also looks very much like the mother of uh, Elon Musk. The same sort of the um, uh, the um, the head form, the skull form. Got the name Vetta, Rieta, Escher. Escher, a famous um, painter, I think, or Louis Henri Fourgeot, a colonel. Um, here, Colonel Louis Henri Fourgeot from Geneva assisted in suppressing a slave uprising in Berbice, Guyana, and uprisings in the Suriname. Uh, Captain Vip from Schaffhauser was commander of a Swiss battalion instrumental in the attempt to re-establish slavery in Haiti. Isaac Milville, citizen of Basel at the service of the Swedish African company founded a slave castle off the coast of modern Ghana. Well, I mean, they're all Swiss, you know, it's... Um, Dunant and Faccio owned various plantations, you know, Henri Dunant, the guy who um, founded the Red Cross. Well, the Red Cross is, is, is just a, uh, is nothing more than a spy organization. So it's all Swiss and it's all because of the Nazi Templars. I'm very, very sure that if you dig a little, little bit deeper in it, in the, sla the, uh, the Swiss involvement in slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. If you dig a bit deeper into it, well, you find the, uh, the family name of Haldimand. And, uh, you know, the, of course they're in it. I mean, he was having friends like uh, the uh, Henri Bouquet and, uh, who genocided the Indians with uh, through biological warfare? You know, this is not a clean, neutral country about which you never hear anything. People, they are they are not. They're very dangerous, which you can see now happening with you know sticking electrodes in your brain, or well, you can stick it somewhere else. Eh? Here you can see the. Haldiman tax collector in some historic writings. So this is the mayor's office here of Eggieville. Eggy, it's it's like Swiss German, like in Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Egger it means uh, to work the land, you know, to uh, to turn the land like upside down, like. And here it says Emmental. So this is the region where they had many children slaves, where it was most of them they were in this region, where I lived as well, and had a horrible time. And um, this is where the ancestors, the nobility of uh, Elon Musk's, where they come from. And here it says the, um, the tax collector Haldiman, he had problems, he was angry on the French because Napoleon... He invaded Switzerland. So, of course, the old nobility, they were the vertical rule, and Napoleon, the horizontal rule, the republic after the revolution. He was destroying the uh, vertical rule of the nobility all over Europe, even going to Russia, Moscow, and, and Germany. And um, so this is why the local nobility, Haldiman, they were angry. He says, es ist toll und rasend. He was really angry. You know, that the, the French, they were like um, disturbing the good business of tax collecting by the nobility in Switzerland. And this is where Elon Musk's mother comes from, as she writes herself in her own biography that her Swiss Haldeman bloodline left Switzerland for Philadelphia in the year 1727 and then crossed the border to Canada right next to Philadelphia of course so here you can see his picture there he is Swissy 
Look, and here it says, Elon Musk's maternal side of the family can be traced back to the villages in the Emmental region of Switzerland. Okay, I'll read it for you here. Tesla CEO Elon Musk had roots in a small picturesque farming region in central Switzerland using genealogy websites and local archives. Historians have been able to connect Musk with the Haldeman name, which is still present in the Emmental region today. I remember the Isis horns and that I've shown you just before that it's the nobility. So it says, you know, May Musk, Elon Musk's mother was born May Haldeman on April 19th, 1948 in Canada. In her autobiography, she says that her father's family emigrated from Switzerland to Philadelphia as early as 1727. May Musk, double M, eh? M, M, and others who have written about Musk's family have never been able to identify exactly which village in Switzerland the family comes from. Well, I can promise you that, that they, they know it. I, they know this perfectly well. They just don't want to announce to the whole world that their origins are from a, a Swiss castle in the Emmental region by the Haldimann nobility. So I'll read furthermore for you. Using genealogy websites, the Sonntag Zeitung was able to trace the family history back to 1544. At that time, Bartholomeus Haldimann was born in the town of Zignau in Emmental. This is 11 generations before Elon Musk's great-grandfather, John Elon Musk, was born. Hmm. So it means the, uh, it, it, you know, it's um, the Musk line of his family has no meaning at all, as, uh, as I've told you. Bartholomew's son, Andreas Haldimann, was born in 1572, and his grandson, Peter Haldimann, on August 19th, 1593. Local archives based on church records validate this. Based on the journalist research, the Haldeman family emigrated to the US in 1719. And uh, were there they renamed themselves Haldeman. You know, the I became an E. Because in German you say Haldeman, like an E here, Haldeman. And here in English, Haldeman. Holdy man, you know, it's the same. They even added a D, which I'm going to show you later on. They renamed themselves just like, you know, like um, Hoover, who his real name was Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover, and uh, President Herbert Hoover. They were Swiss Hoovers. You got another one. There they remain, renamed themselves Haldeman and settled in Pennsylvania. It's clear that Elon Musk has roots in Signal and Eggieville. I just showed you Eggieville, remember? The, uh, the tax collector Haldeman. Because the Haldemans have lived in this area since time imm immemorial. Another origin is impossible. Do you hear this? It's impossible another origin because outside of the Emmental region, this surname never appeared at that time, said the local historian. Well, you can see his name here. So here you can see a genuine picture of Elon Musk's mother, May Musk Haldimann of the Swiss Haldimann nobility of the Emmental where they kept slave children until 1989. So she is a world famous model obsessed with eternal life, staying young forever, and certainly 
taking the embryonal youth elixir from the Swiss Prairie Clinic, about which I've already talked to you about. Not difficult to see where her son got all his eternal life ideas from, having an obsessed mother with the very same idea, which happens to be the obsession of the entire pharaonic elite ruling over us, who basically are a bunch of vampires sucking up human stem cells. And believe it or not, this too is a genuine picture of Elon Musk's mother of the Haldeman bloodline. And you see, I told you the color red, a red ring here. She knows exactly what she's doing. The red dress, and here's white, you know, for the uh, colors of the Knights Templars. But anyway, the red ring definitely indicates, you know, the old world order, the vertical rule. The Perthasser, um, the Red House of Pharaoh. She knows exactly what she's doing. And, um, and I know where she is from. Therefore, Elon Musk is having the graphics of a life machine in his Neuralink logo which you can see here. This is his Neuralink logo. This is the graphics of a life machine, you know, in a hospital. The um, and Neuralink is the company that wants to connect us to a computer before the turn of the year. And seeing the horizontal line in his logo of the life machine, standing for clinical death of the life machine. They probably want to kill us. Then take your soul and keep your soulless body forever connected to a computer for the organ harvesting for the elite's eternity program nightmare. So here you see the life machine, and this is going to be you or your child. And this is the logo of Neuralink. This is exactly this. Now, why did the dude take the graphics of a life machine for the logo? You ask yourself this very serious question. So this is again the, um, the graphics of the life machine and the Neuralink logo. And this is on Wikipedia. So you can read it all if you like. Look here. In April 2021, that was only last year, Neuralink demonstrated a monkey playing the game Pong. Well, you, you're probably going to be the other monkey, so you can play ping with the pong, yeah? Using the Neuralink implants. While similar technology has existed since 2002, when a research group first demonstrated a monkey moving a computer cursor with neural signals, scientists acknowledged the engineering process in making the implant wireless and increasing the number of implanted electrodes are well, marvelous isn't it only you just don't want to be that one being used eh? yeah look this is about the animal testing in february 2022 neuralink said that monkeys died during testing but they also said no animal abuse occurred. Oh, well, they died, but no abuse. Yeah, okay. They just died horribly, you know, with some uh, some ele electrodes sticking out of their brains, you know. 
So Neuralink tests their devices by surgically implanting them in the brains of live monkeys. No, no, they didn't. No abuse, eh? Pigs and other animals. Neuralink's methods have been criticized by groups just as PETA. Well, the government has put PETA, of course, on, a, uh, on the terrorist list, eh? Because, you know, if you criticize our masters, and our masters, as we already know, they see us as monkeys, pigs, and other stuff like that. So, I can read it yourself, eh? I mean, marvelous people, aren't they now, eh? Hey, Swissy. Marvelous Haldiman. Animal torturers. Alert. 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 So, Elon Musk's mother is May Haldiman from Canada. Therefore, in Quebec, Canada, there is the Haldimand or Haldimand Castle by Sir Frederick Haldimand, another Indian killer, together with his personal friend, Colonel Henri Bouquet, who did a genocide on American Indians through biological warfare, about which I already made videos. So here you can see it about the Chateau Haldimand or Haldimand. The Chateau Haldimand was a castle that stood where the Chateau Frontenac now stands in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. The building was constructed between 1784 and 1786. In 1784, the then governor of Quebec, Frederick Haldimand, ordered construction of the Chateau. It became the seat of the colonial government of the province of Quebec from 1786 to 1791. So Swissy became the governor of Quebec. There you can see him. That's Swissy here. And um, in 1860, the Canadian government established administrative offices and the headquarters of the Legisl Legislative Assembly of Canada in this castle until 1866. The castle was later used as part of Laval University until 1892, when it was demolished to make way for the construction of the Chateau Frontenac. Oh, wow. That's impressive, eh? So, okay, well, we've seen that picture here. And there's this one here. And uh, apparently now it looks like this here. Oh, that is a castle, eh? Only Pharaoh can be there. And uh, it's um, on the Place d'Armes. It means the square of the weapons, the weapons square. A eh, Swissy. Eh? Uh, Sir Haldimand was born in Yverdon, Switzerland before going to England as a Swiss Nazi Templar mercenary. He became the governor, or rather, governator of Quebec in Canada from 1778 until 1786, terrorizing the Canadian population. So if you're Canadian, I'd urge you to read the whole Wikipedia of this horrific Swiss criminal of Elon Musk's very powerful Swiss bloodline. And maybe somebody can go to Quebec, some Canadian, and film the, um, the Chateau Haldiman or at the uh, Place d'Armes, where now is the, uh, the, other, the other castle. So please, somebody do that for me. See what you can find. So this is very interesting, you know, and this is a very important person. So you were all thinking that, you know, England was ruling over Canada, eh? Well, you're wrong. You know, 
because of the order of the Garter, the Knights Templars, they took over. It became a constitutional monarchy, England did. So, and this is, you know, the consequences of it all. So I read it for you. Sir Frederick Haldimand, you know, a um, ancestor of um, Elon Musk and his mother, May Musk. He was born in, um, um, in maybe 1718 or in 1791. So um, in the times of the, uh, the French Revolution, that was in uh, 1789. He was a military officer best known for his service in the British Army in North America during the Seven Years' War and the American Revolutionary War. So he was killing Americans, you know, who were fighting for their freedom. So from 1778 and 1786, he served as governor of the province of Quebec. And during which time he oversaw military operations against the northern frontiers in the war and engaged in ultimate fruitless negotiations to establish the independent Vermont Republic as a new British province. His administration of Quebec was at times harsh, with the detention of numerous political dissidents and agitators. You know, Swiss here was um, terrorizing the Canadians your ancestors, Canadians. So why didn't you know this? Eh? Haldimand was born in Yverdon, Switzerland. This is what Yverdon looks like. Oh, isn't it nice? And this is what, of course, what, what's the same. And he was baptized François Louis Frédéric Haldimand. He was the son of a civil servant, well, of course, you know. He became interested in the military at an early age and the poor prospects of for advancement in Switzerland led him to join foreign armies, you know, the, whole, the notorious Swiss mercenaries, of course, under Knight Templar command since 1291. His first service appears to have been in the army of Prussia during the War of the Austrian Succession, with whom he fought at Mollwitz and probably at uh, Hohenfriedberg and Kesselsdorf. He next joined the Swiss Guards of the Dutch Republic. This is what I told you. There were how many? 150,000 Swiss mercenaries uh, after the Thirty Year War, which ended in 1648. So they didn't have anything more to do. They killed 20 million people in Germany. So they all went to um, to serve the uh, the Dutch King of the. Um, of this horrendous House of Orange, you know. So that was, um, that happened just before he got born, maybe a hundred years before. So you can easily say now that the, the Dutch police are beating up Dutch farmers, you know, and people who don't want to be locked down. Uh, they are Swiss, you know, that's why they can easily knock down and, and terrorize the, uh, the Dutch population because they're not, and they know it. You know, you have to know history in Switzerland, otherwise you won't understand the bloody thing. Eh? So where he rose to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the Dutch, uh, so Swiss he became a Lieutenant Colonel in the Dutch uh, army, the Swiss Guards. Uh, this is what they look like, the Swiss Guards. Eh? And uh, there, so in the Netherlands, over there, he formed a friendship with Henri Bouquet. You remember that guy? Another Swiss military man with whom he would serve in North America. I made a video about it. Henri Bouquet, also, it says here, was a Swiss mercenary. There was a guy who did the genocide on the North American Indians using biological warfare and poisoning them with infected blankets with, uh, I forgot the disease, the measles or whatever, something like that. And they all died, you know. They didn't even have to kill them or fight them, you know. It's so Swiss, it's clean, you know, just like how they, they tortured me in prison when I was a political prisoner for five and a half years in Switzerland, you know. 
torturing me by um, oxygen deprivation. It's clean. It's just as clean as infected blankets for the Native Americans. Eh? And of course, we had um, General Custer, who was also Swiss. I also made a video about this on my channel. Hatzefatz. They're all Swiss. And this is because of the Nazi Templars. So, well, you have to read it all yourself. I can't just read it here. And um, so Canadians do read this. Uh, there was something else I forgot about it. Um, so very, imp this guy was ruling over Canada. You know, very important person, very important. And he was Swiss, Sir Haldimand. And this is the bloodline of um, Elon Musk's mother, May Haldimand. And uh, um, okay, well, anyway, he terrorized the Canadians, eh? And they uh, now they terrorize the whole world. Try to put a uh, some cables into your brain, eh? Completely ruthless then and now. The name Haldeman or Haldeman has several writings which change over the centuries, you know. So sometimes written with an E in the middle or an I in the middle or a D at the end. But as genealogists have put it, all Haldemans, whatever their writings, are finally all from the Swiss. Emmental, and they are part of the Swiss nobility of Pharaoh. Therefore, the Isis horns here. I'll show it to you. The Isis horns. This is all Pharaoh. They, they rule in Canada, in Quebec, in England, in America, all over the world. Hey? So here you can see the two goddesses, Isis, with the Isis horns, just like in the coat of arms, the crest of the Haldiman family and ancestors of uh, Swiss nobility ancestors of Elon Musk. And this is Ma'at with the wings, the goddess Ma'at, you know, the, ones, the one of the, uh, the Ten Commandments, or actually the 42 principalities, where the Ten Commandments are included in. So, and here, a, um, uh, in my last video, a fan of my videos, he left a good, very good comment talking about the, um, the anchor I filmed on a lorry. Remember, lorry was passing by and I was like uh, breaking, breaking down the, the symbols. And it had the, uh, the anchor symbol and also like an anchor. And uh, so he said, and I never thought about this, that um, so all the honor to him, you can find him in the, in the comments and give him a hand, give him a... So uh, it's even in the word anchor, ankh, it's in the word anchor, like anchored in the law, for instance, you know. This is, you know, an official, you know, the law, you know, this is... And um, the um, it 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 really showed an uh, um, uh, well an anchor um, the 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 anchor symbol in the in the anchor you know where it was going like round at the bottom here like and this is where you where you rope the um, uh, the, the, the anchor you tie it here in the hole here and, and in the in the logo of the lorry it was round like here like an anchor but it was definitely also the ankh symbol in it and it, it's in the word ankh anchor anchored in the law so here are the I, these people are the law you know they don't care about the law themselves but um 
for us, I mean, we have to abide by the law. So these are the Isis horns with the, the sun disc uh, in the middle. And um, also to be found on, uh, on the crest of, uh, of the Haldimans. Very powerful line, eh? very powerful bloodline. Sir Frederick Haldimand, the Swiss governator of Quebec, also had a son who built the Haldimand Tower in Lausanne, which you can see here. So here you can see what the Haldimand Tower in Switzerland, what it looks like today. There it is. Looks a bit like the Newport Tower by the Knights Templars in America, doesn't it? And um, same writing, same spelling here as in Quebec. Well, it's the same family. And um, so here's the guy who had it made, William Haldimand. There he is. Uh, he was even a, a British banker. So, but he lived in Switzerland. Right? And so this is in Lausanne. And uh, the Haldimand Tower. So we got the Haldimand Tower, the Haldimand Castle, and and so forth, and and so on. So there he is, the guy who had the Haldimand Tower built in uh, in Lausanne. So William Haldimand. Um, from 70, he was born, um, he lived from 1784 to 1862, was an English philanthropist. Yeah, of course, all the Freemasons are, aren't they now? The director of the Bank of England. This was the director of the Bank of England. Now, look, have a good look. Swissy here was the director of the Bank of England. This is what I told you, people. All the banks in the world are Nazi Templar banks, even the Bank of England. That's why they have a Swiss director of the Bank of England. Like all nations traded with her, remember, they all traded with the Nazi Templar banks. Yeah? He looks a bit like same features as uh, the mother of um, uh, Elon Musk, you know, the chin, the nose. Aristocrats, they have long noses. Looks very much like her. Well, anyway, it's the same family, you know. So this is very important. The director of the Bank of England, Swissy here. All the banks in the world, they're all Swiss banks. He was a member of Parliament, Swissy. British Parliament. House of Commons. You know? Where you can see the symbol of the Order of the Garter here in it is the the the, um, the garter you know the, the belt here the q this is q with on this side the knights templars and this side the monarchy this side the um, republicans against the monarchist so in fact he was um, he was not the uh, um, i made a mistake he was not the son of sir frederick haldimand the other swiss e but it's the same family. He, uh, he was a nephew and the heir of Sir Frederick Haldimand. Yeah. So Haldimand settled permanently at his summer villa in Dunaltu near Lausanne in Switzerland. Yeah. So they're all Swissies, you know, they're everywhere. And he was in international politics and all that and everywhere. The Kingdom of Piedmont, Sardinia, everywhere in politics. Remember the Shards, Sardinia, probably the reason. Oh, you know, what they do everywhere in international politics, these uh, Swissies, they, um, they're just defending their, their interests, you know, their own interests. So, Haldimand family, very, very powerful, and they're all over the world. Canada, England, they're everywhere. The Swiss Haldimand family 
as you can see here, Ernst Haldimann. They are absolutely into internationally slaughtering and terrorizing civilians, like the Swiss SS Ernst Haldimann, a Swiss Nazi war criminal who executed defenseless civilians during World War II, and apparently also American rangers who surrendered prisoners of war. Apparently, he was a Colonel Standartenführer in the SS, who gave himself out for a simple Corporal Unterscharführer when he was caught. Yes, the Haldimann Swiss killers all over the world. So he can, I'll read it for you. Ernst Haldimann, facts. On September 5, 1944, a unit of Belgian Maquis, which is the uh, resistance, attacked a German unit, killing three soldiers. Two days later, the American troops arrived in the area and the Germans retreated. On December 22, 1944, during the Ardennes Offensive, the Battle of the Bulge, the village of Bond was retaken by the Germans. On Christmas Eve, a unit of the German SD Sicherheitsdienst set about arresting all men in the village. These were questions about the events relating to the December, September 5 attack and then lined up in front of the local cafe. One by one, they were led to an open door and a SD Sicherheitsdienst man positioned just inside the door fired at point blank into each of the vi victims neck all of the 34 men aged 17 to 32 were killed in this way only one managed to flee this was leon prel who decided to make a run for it and escaped into the woods he later was able to give testimony regarding the events so on january 10th 1945, the village of Bond was liberated by British troops and the massacre was discovered. One man, a German-speaking Swiss national by the name of Ernst Haldimann, which is a Swiss name only from the Emmental region, was identified as being a member of the execution squad. He had joined the SS in France in, no in November 1942. And in 1944, his unit was integrated with other SD units into number 8 SS Commando for Special Duties. Well, these are the, the, uh, the notorious SS Einsatzgruppen, who did the, uh, the genocide on the jaywalkers using like bullets, killing 400,000 people. And at the head of them, there was another Swiss and his, uh, he was also a colonel, Standartenführer, and his name was Karl Jäger. Haldimann was arrested in Switzerland after the war. Yeah, sure he was. Come on. Get out of here. He never did a day in prison. So here you see the work of the Swiss Haldimann family. Yeah, a lot of dead people in 1945. It looks like a kid, you know, 17 years old. And I, I didn't read the whole thing here, but uh, it's in French. I can read French, that's no problem. So you can read it yourself here. Just punch pause. Here you can read the name um, Haldimann. Uh, it says, uh, pas plus que l'untersturmführer Krüger, qui avec le président donna l'ordre à Haldimann d'exécuter des otages de Bond. Uh, there's probably more about the Haldimann, but uh, you can read it yourself. There are the, uh, the dead people here and here as well. I swear see. You never do it in Switzerland, do you now, eh? You always do it abroad. And uh, I, th yeah, they also executed um, uh, American Rangers. 
So, Haldimon family, you know, they're killing people all over. Here's some more here. It's a young girl, I think, here. Oh, the whole family got wasted here. Right here. And you can see that the whole family. Yeah, this is what left of them. Hey, Swissy, why do you do this, eh? Why do you do this, Swissy? Coming after you, Swissy. So probably the Swissy is somewhere, you know, having a number here somewhere, one of one of these here. Swissy Nazi war criminal. They just love that, you know. Killing people, terrorizing people, you know, sticking electrodes in your brain or whatever. Haldimand family. You know, dig some more in it. Eh? Nobody ever heard about this. I presume that the Musk bloodline from Elon Musk's father's side are merely nest providers for the Swiss Haldimand bloodline. So the queen of the Suis Swiss sisters of Isis could lay her eggs in a relatively comfortable nest and then ditched the nest provider afterwards as he became useless to her personal progress elbowing her way towards the top for herself and her hatched eggs. Hey Swissy. Here you get to see some more of the pharaonic idea. You know the B queens, one here and one here, and with the life sign, the Ankh in the middle. So, and Egypt was in fact a matriarchal society. You know, so the bee queens, you know, like giving life here. Just to lay their eggs. In the Bernese Swiss German dialect, where the Emmental lays in, the name Haldimann gets pronouns Haudemann, meaning, or Haudimann, meaning Haudenmann, in English, strike that man, which is definitely a reference to the Swiss Nazi Templars and their notorious Swiss mercenaries like Sir Frederick Haldimand, the governator of Quebec, and the rest of those Swiss genociders on Native Americans, on slaves, on jaywalkers, and the rest. This here is a genuine Templar's cross in the right color, red on white. And that's why this dude here has been forced to wear a Templar's cross on his chest and controlled by a Swiss Nazi Templar army since 1506. Just another puppet, like all the constitutional monarchies like the British Queen, that are no real monarchies since they obey the Templars' Republican Constitution, as in a constitutional monarchy, through the Order of the Garter. Jesuits and Catholics are monarchists, while Templars are Republicans who founded Protestantism. The church has been taken over for a very long time now, and seeing a Jesuit Pope forced to wear the red cross of his enemy on his pontifical robe means nothing more than that Jesuits have no power whatsoever anymore. The Jesuits just have a high standard of education 
for the aristocratic royalist elite with excellent schools and universities. Nothing more than that, folks, really. When Donald Trump attends a Jesuit university for the elite, that doesn't mean he's a Jesuit. It just means he's an aristocrat, which he is, in fact, and related by blood to the royal houses of Norway and Denmark, which you can see in one of my videos. And remember that Ignatius de Loyola, one of the Jesuit founders, was a Basque aristocrat with a castle and all. So, this picture here by some American religious freaks is entirely wrong. Trump is not a Jesuit. These people who rule us do not even believe in religion, except for using religion as a tool and weapon against the slaves in order to break the warrior's mindset and to prevent the slaves from taking things into their own hands. Again, you might say. The Vatican belongs to Switzerland. Their Nazi Templars and their Swiss Guard and Sisters of Isis. The first name of May Haldiman or May Musk of Elon Musk's ethnic Swiss mother is yet another reference to the very powerful Swiss nobility of the house of von Mai. Here you can see it, Mai. It says in German, is ein Berner Patrizienfamilie. That's uh, Swiss nobility. Uh, here they got the coat of arms here. Of course, with lions, you know, a symbol of the aristocracy, concept of, uh, oh, funny, two times concept of three, which is them, of course. Blue for the war. And it's probably gold, golden. And this is in Schaffhausen. It's called the uh, Ritterhaus. And here again, Mai. It says Mai. Die Freiherren von Mai. So, uh, Haus zum Ritter. Here it says there was that thing there in. Uh, yeah, I probably saw that once. And um, very powerful family. And they're everywhere, you see. They are, they are in like in Augsburg, they're in, in Prague. Uh, here, here are some of their castles here in Switzerland. Schloss Brestenberg. This was Schloss Ruhrd, Ruhrd, Schloss Toffen, Schloss Urseln, Schloss Schöftland, Rebgut Beltrüsch, some of their castles. So, and these people, so it says here they're from Bern nobility and these are called the Bernburger meaning the Bernese castle dwellers from the German word Burg for castle and not to be mistaken with the word Bernburger with an umlaut on the U meaning the citizens of Bern. Funny how two mere dots on the U make out the difference in between the masters and their slaves. The bound burger are the masters and the bound burger, their slaves. Funny indeed, and worth to ponder about. So here it says, bound burger, they are like very secretive, 
group of people in Bern, which is the capital of Switzerland, and who have a lot of power. So this is the U I was talking about. If the two dots are on the U, it's called Umlaut, then it means the citizens of the town of Bern. And like here, it's from Burg, which means a castle. It says the castle dwellers of Bern. Another thing Homi Ross pondered about is that Elon Musk has a very fitting anagram for his name. When you toss the letters around like in Scrabble, Lone Scum. Now, that'll be a good title for a film. Lone Scum and Planet of the Apes. You, humanity, are the apes of Pharaoh's nobility.